tonight. A temporary fix before a permanent one for a sinkhole in Regina is going to cost the city a lot of money. Also, Air Canada apologizes to the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations after staff tried to stow her headdress in cargo before a flight. Plus, a small town solution for an aging population that isn't driving as much. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Friday, April 26th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. The weekend is finally here, but so are pesky ticks. Scientists are on high alert this year as new varieties of ticks known to carry disease threaten to multiply in our province. Laura Sharpaletti has the details. The sun is out and dog owners are hitting the trails and parks. But there's a catch. The ticks are sticking like magnets. You get lots every trip now, it seems. Uh, within minutes, you notice them crawling on your legs. And uh, I don't ever remember it being that bad. Experts say the increase in ticks is partly due to the longer seasons of warm weather. In fact, people in Saskatchewan reported seeing ticks in December. Climate change is going to be good for ticks. They're possibly not so good for the rest of us. It's going to give a longer season of tick activity. The number of black leg ticks, a species known to carry Lyme disease, is increasing in Saskatchewan. So far, scientists have only found adult ticks, but they say they're getting ready to monitor for larvae and nymphs. It's not just the black-legged tick that we're worried about. There's um, a longhorned tick that has become a real issue in the northeastern U.S. that Canada really needs to be very aware if it gets here. That tick is, is kind of scary. It can reproduce without males. So a single female can start her own population and they carry other diseases that are really bad. The threat of these more dangerous ticks is concerning to many dog owners. Every year I get her a, you know, some kind of medication and injection, whatever my veterinarian recommend. And that's probably it. And we go a lot out you now for camping and stuff. I'm really scared about the ticks. Jenkins says scientists will be looking at methods used in the states to manage new ticks and tick-borne diseases. I would describe Canada as, as quite vulnerable because we don't have a lot of those here. So it's certainly something to be aware of that the ticks are going, ticks and their diseases will become a bigger part of our future. Scientists and the Ministry of Health are also asking the public to help. If you see any ticks when you're out and about, take a photo and report it at etic.ca. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. Remember that backyard sinkhole that closed much of the Albert Street Bridge in Regina last summer? Well, it's fixed for now, but it's temporary. The hole was the result of a collapsed storm pipe under the bridge in Wascana Park. It nearly swallowed a play structure in this backyard. The temporary fix is costing one and a half million dollars. Crews are planning a permanent solution for next year, so for now, this section of the park will remain fenced off. The aging pipe dated back to the 1940s and the mayor says it needs to be replaced. It will be far more expensive 10 years from now than it will be now, but there's only so much money as well. And so again, being methodical and making sure that council is aware within a budget that they can read as to what the plans are to address that. These nine pumps will remain in place until a permanent solution is complete. That also means that the Albert Street Bridge stairwell and underpass will be closed on both sides for the rest of the year. Air Canada is apologizing to the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations after staff tried to stow her headdress in cargo before a flight this week. Karen Pauls has the story. National Chief Cindy Woodhouse Niepenak received this headdress New Year's Day, honoring her role in the historic $43 billion Indigenous Child Welfare Agreement, the Eagle Feathers Blessed, to support her in her travels and her challenges. It's like your, like your child, like your baby. It's with you. It's part of you. Wednesday night was the first time she had problems traveling with it on a small Dash 8 plane from Montreal to Fredericton. They wanted to put it down below and of course it's got cultural significance to me and you know in that point I was kind of stunned. 
After some heated discussion, the container was sent to cargo. Woodhouse Nipanak held the headdress on her lap. She later posted about it on Facebook, prompting anger, outrage and demands for an apology. Cindy felt, you know, she was violated, you know, she felt, uh, you know, a dagger through her heart. Leonard Weasel Traveler gifted the headdress to the National Chief on behalf of the Pecani Nation. He says items like this are sacred and need to be handled accordingly. Perhaps that was just a staff member doing their job and just not having this awareness. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said it was an unacceptable mistake. It is uh, an unfortunate situation that I hope is going to lead to uh, uh, a bit of learning, not just by Air Canada, but a lot of different institutions. In a statement, Air Canada says it has reached out directly to speak with National Chief Woodhouse Nipanak to better understand and apologize for her experience. The case was difficult to carry in the cabin due to stowage space limitations. The headdress itself remained in the cabin with the chief. But the airline says it will review its policies to make sure special items like this can travel with the customer. Woodhouse Nipanak and her headdress made it home. The National Chief says despite the disrespect and humiliation she felt, she's encouraged by the support from Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians, seeing it as a step towards reconciliation. Karen Pauls, CBC News, Winnipeg. Almost a decade after Haven Dubois died, there will finally be a public inquest into his death. At the time, the 14-year-old's death was ruled accidental, but his family has long suspected it was suspicious. The teen was found dead in this creek in East Regina in May of 2015. The coroner's report found marijuana played a role in his death. Dubois' family has fought relentlessly to get more answers about what happened that day. In 2018, supporters took part in the Justice for Our Stolen Children camp outside the legislature in Regina. And last year, the family marched from Saskatoon to Ottawa, calling for answers. The inquest will be held the last week of May at the Royal Hotel in Regina. A Quebec man is admitting to his role in a scheme to fleece Saskatoon seniors. Ahmad Ibadi pleaded guilty to fraud in provincial court earlier this week. The scammers took seniors for tens of thousands of dollars. It's not the first phone scam to target seniors. Thieves typically contact their victims pretending to be a family member in trouble. In this case, police warned Saskatoon seniors of the latest version of the scam just before Christmas 2022. There were dozens of victims. A body was caught when one couple didn't take the bait and called police. What Mr. Ibadi had pled guilty to was um, being a part of the grandparents fraud that has been occurring in Saskatoon, um, essentially where victims were told that their loved ones were in custody and needed to pay bail. And Mr. Ibadi pled guilty as being a, a party to that type of fraud. Ibadi returns to court in June for sentencing his two co-accused, also from Quebec, are still going through court. For those in small town Saskatchewan, accessing transportation can be challenging. But one community has found a solution that's working and inspiring others. Helena Mahalik has more. We really needed this in this town. Seniors who live in small towns like Gravelberg often have no way of getting to their medical appointments in the city. So in 2018, the town banded together to create a solution the Gravelberg Cares Shuttle Service. I've had some surgeries in the past, not that long ago, and I don't know what I would do without them. The province shut down the Saskatchewan Transportation Company, or STC, due to increased costs. It says private operators are filling the void its buses left back in 2017. Now, the federal government is stepping in, providing Gravelberg with $85,000 to improve services. The shuttle has just one employee, a dispatcher. Every other role is volunteer-based, including the drivers. You don't want people that shouldn't be driving, driving under pressure. So that was one of the factors that made it apparent to me that it was something that I could do to step in to create a meaningful service to the residents of the community. Nowadays, there's a lot more people that come to the small towns, Gravelberg and beyond, and they may not have that extended family here. And so we really have become their lifeline. It's been so successful that nearby communities in Saskatchewan are following Gravelberg's lead. 
the word began to spread and, and uh, we've been, Al went to Musumin because they wanted to know what the heck are you guys doing and we want to do it too. And Indian had followed. The shuttle offers the very practical purpose of taking the people in Gravelberg from point A to point B. But those running the program say it gives people so much more, a connection. There are a lot of people that are very isolated and you may be the only person that they talk to that day. So it, uh, it does provide a good feeling for the drivers and for the passengers. In talking with the people running the shuttle service around town, there's hope that they can build a bigger network across the province with a long-term goal of bringing rural communities together to improve accessibility for everyone. Helena Mahalik, CBC News, Gravelberg. What a gorgeous sunny day on the South Saskatchewan River in Saskatoon. It was a breezy one though, and that will continue into tomorrow, but so will the sun. Ethan will tell you what comes after that in his forecast after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. In Saskatchewan right now, there are nine active wildfires. Five of those are contained. But for our neighbours to the west, things have really escalated. Much of Alberta is under a sweeping fire restriction. The Calgary area, Rocky View County, is the latest to issue an advisory. Dry conditions and high wind through much of the province is expected to elevate the risk of wildfires heading into the weekend. You can find more details about restrictions and wildlife risks on county websites if you're heading to Alberta over the weekend. It's albertafirebans.ca. There aren't any active evacuation orders or alerts, but wildfires have already consumed more than 2,000 hectares of forest to date. This weather update is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz Regina, proud member of the Capital Automotive Group. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. Nine fires in Saskatchewan. And I mean, if they start really sparking up in Alberta, we're going to start seeing smoke. Yeah, exactly. And that uh, could definitely be a concern. Of course, uh, for f there are fire bans in place here as well in Saskatchewan. Those are available on the uh, Saskatchewan Public Safety Agency website uh, where you can see those. One just added to the RM around the city of Regina actually recently as well. And uh, these temperatures are uh, definitely not helping that situation. It's uh, been warm and dry and at times windy today uh, and through this week in much of south and central. But uh, part of the good news is that the north, uh, where we usually see our forest fires, and those sparking up uh, sometimes pretty early in the season. We've seen some moisture moving through and these temperatures are quite below seasonal for this time of year and down into the minus single digits all day today for Stony Rapids in Uranium City. Big difference as you go down south though, but you can see sort of a drop off in temperatures here again, just like yesterday and near 20 degrees still in the southeast and then single digits as you head your way up uh, north and west uh, to areas uh, like Meadow Lake and uh, around uh, Lloyd Minster as well. We're seeing that uh, too. Uh, breezy throughout the province. Nothing too extreme today, but in that range of 40 to 50 kilometers an hour, just enough that it's kind of noticeable when you're outside when those winds uh, do start to pick up. Generally from the north is uh, where we're going to be uh, seeing those. Want to start down south for a look at our radar first because we have quite a, a low pressure system that's brought through a pretty significant severe weather outbreak in the states. Some pretty damaging tornadoes in Iowa and Nebraska and the top end of that system is now moving kind of just out of southeastern Saskatchewan. It brought a few uh, uh, thunderstorms and showers overnight last night and some heavier rain into uh, Manitoba. But other than that, you can see that starting to clear away and we are left with uh, mostly sunny skies today. That'll change a little bit as we head into the weekend because increasing cloudiness tomorrow as a result of a low pressure system in uh, Alberta means that we actually may start to see some showers move through overnight into early Sunday morning in west central parts of the province. That'll shift northward for Sunday. Maybe a little bit of some wet snow mixed in there as well. Clearing out in the south a bit for Sunday, but uh, the north will stay mostly cloudy as a result. And then Monday uh, we'll uh, still see that linger at times. Southwestern and west central Saskatchewan, only about two to five millimeters from this. A little heavier as you go north. Again, five to ten millimeters possible there. And we'll continue to see those gusts uh, at times uh, in the range of about 30 to 40 tomorrow. So a bit of a break from the winds, but then 
Heading into Sunday province wide, we start to see those pick up again 40 to 50 and the wind continues to be a theme heading into next week. But until then, not a bad weekend ahead for Regina and southern Saskatchewan as uh, we see temperatures in the mid teens about normal for this time of year. We'll jump up in the sunshine on Monday and then uh, possibly some more substantial rain moving through for Tuesday and Wednesday. Saskatoon now uh, we're seeing an increase in our temperatures and in cloudiness over the weekend until we get full cloud cover again, possibly some PM showers on Tuesday. Tuesday and then Wednesday as we start the month of May a little chilly hard to believe Sam we're already at the end of April we need those April showers yeah they better come soon <laughs> thanks Ethan you bet the young killer whale trapped for more than a month in a BC lagoon is finally free Quisa Hayes or little hunter had been bottlenecked by a sandbar the local First Nations leading the rescue say the orca swam over it on her own this morning at high tide they say the team is ecstatic, though she still has to reach open ocean. The calf's been trapped in the lagoon since March 23rd when her pregnant mom was beached and died at low tide. The team is now encouraging her to get out towards the ocean where it's hoped she'll be able to reconnect with her family pod. We'll be back after the break. Moving to a new country can be daunting, especially if you're looking for a job or a place to live or new friends. But for one recent newcomer, the Saskatoon Roller Derby League helped a lot. In this video for CBC's Creator Network, filmmaker Felipe Gomez documents his sister's journey. My name is Barbara Francisca Gomez Morales. So how did I make it here? here to see terror. I'm new in Canada. I'm from Chile and I just was just looking for stuff to do in Saskatoon to meet new people and I heard about roller derby and someone told me that you were the one to talk to. There is a test that you have to pass oh to show that you can play. Okay. So Good. I can help you out with that. I'll show you some things and we can get started right away. Okay. The last time that I was on skate was when I was like 10 and I was long time ago so I've got some things to show you okay perfect thank you okay so the first thing we need to teach you is how to stop so when you're stopping you're gonna come forward you're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna push your feet out <laughs> exercise of workout to do it's been really long yeah it's a lot of work that's everything I have to teach you though for today mm -hmm. so we'll see you back here in two weeks after you've practiced and we can see what you've learned okay thank you oh my god it's so cool <laughs> it's so cool yeah. how do you like your new home you know even though it's very cold I think this is the coolest place on yeah. Earth. yeah <laughs> I'm loving it so much, but it's so cool. Oh, it is. I know a place we can warm up. Let's go. Okay. So I ordered a Caesar for you. It's a classic Canadian drink, and this is a rite of passage of being in Canada. You have to try one. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you really drink <laughs> Do you really drink this here? What is your favorite thing about roller derby? The community. Yeah? Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, the people have really made it for me. The like the support and the love and the acceptance of everybody of all types and from everywhere. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. When you leave your home behind and when you start from scratch building community, it's really hard. It's really hard because it's when you immigrate, it's just work, and then what else do you got? Like no hobbies. So I think I think this is a good place for me. Yeah, I'm excited. Today is day five of my roller derby training. I'm excited, but I'm nervous about the roller derby test. So let's see how it goes. Let's see if the practice paid off.
Okay, show me your weaving. Out. Don't be nervous. That one, yeah, your left leg. Oh, you did them both good. You crushed both of them that time. Good. That was really good. You have been working hard. Good job. Thank you. You didn't pass everything, but you passed enough. Here is your league t-shirt. Oh Welcome God. to the team. Thank you. I mean, it's like the one that you had before. Hi. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It was such a great time. So now you have to pick your derby name. Do you know what you're gonna pick? Yes. What's it gonna be? Okay, my sister tells me Gansa, which is goose, and my favorite anime character in the whole world has a power that is di oro, and that's in Italian, and one is in Spanish, so it's gonna be la Gansa di oro. That's excellent, I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, this has been amazing. <laughs> I think one of the most important things of being part of the um, Saskatoon Roller Derby League is that it helped me to be more proud of being a queer woman. To see so many examples of everything, like all of the, these queer, beautiful people, all of the different kinds of bodies and abilities, being there and putting the job and enjoying what they're doing, it was a really healing experience for me that also helped me to be there and enjoy what I love. That video was done by Felipe Gomez for the CBC Creator Network. If you're a young digital storyteller, we do want to hear from you. Learn how to pitch by heading to cbc.ca slash creator network SK. Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. Ooh. We made it to Friday. Hey, we did. I got to stretch out after seeing that. That looks like <laughs> tough work. Yeah, roller yes. derby. It's no joke. That's for sure. Uh, also, no joke. It's going to be a warm one in Regina tonight. Seven degrees under clear skies uh, at midnight by tomorrow morning. Lots of sunshine. Going to be a nice uh, morning if you want to get out and do a Saturday uh, walk out there. East winds will start picking up a little bit and switch to about the southeast by the afternoon. Temperature, though, around 13 degrees is going to make for uh, a nice day. Saskatoon uh, also on the clear side tonight with a temperature around uh, 4 degrees. And then we get into tomorrow morning, uh, temperature around 3. So dropping not all that much and then warming up again as we get into the afternoon. A little more cloud cover, I think, for the Saskatoon area under 12 degrees. But uh, overall, a pretty nice weekend ahead for the province, Sam. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Ethan. You bet. And before we go... A British auction is selling two items this weekend from one of the world's most compelling disasters, the sinking of the Titanic. Two of the most famous passengers owned what is being auctioned. First is a gold pocket watch from John Jacob Astor, the richest man on board. The watch was recovered and his son restored it, later giving it as a gift. The auction house is expecting bids over $250,000 Canadian for it. The other option, or object rather, is a violin bag belonging to Wallace Hartley, Titanic's orchestra leader, just 33 years old. He played on the deck while the ship was going down. The bag is expected to go for more than $200,000 Canadian. And now I want to go watch Titanic. That is it for us tonight. For news anytime, head to cbc.ca slash sask, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or download the CBC News app. Thanks always for watching. Have a great weekend.